Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. In my last video, the warp drive test ship, I had a lot of people asking in comments on how to build the the warp drive or aka the kraken docking port drive now many people have already covered this other youtubers like scott manley matt Lown, and several others so i figured screw it let's just cover the basic three different types of kraken drives now the warp drive that i use or the kraken drive that i use for warp engines is two docking ports one with the docking acquire force of 0% and the other one with the docking acquire force of 200% and then some sort of mechanism to bring one side as close as possible to the other side but not touching or engaging because one side is 0% it has no pull or force towards the other one and because the other side has 200% it has a great pull or force towards the other one. So basically your craft is going to move in this direction. Now I've tried many different tests in many different ways to make this thing work the best that I could make it work. And trust me, it took a very long time. As a matter of fact, here are some clips from streams months and months and months ago of me testing out this drive. Whoa, okay, that was that was immediate. Alio Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh. whoa, 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 Okay, we're getting a little spin still. It looks like 19, 17, 14. Oh shit, oh, hey, where are you going? <laughs> Two, one, this is a uh, 20, almost 25, engage. Engage. Oh! Whoa! Okay, let's engage the drive now. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I figured that was the case. We are at 4G acceleration. Makes sense, right? Since each of these is about a G accelerator, well, uh, actually each two of these is about G accelerator. I don't know. So those are some clips from old streams that I did a uh, very long time ago as I was testing out the whole Kraken docking port drive in order to make a type of stock warp drive. In my tests as well that I, I noticed that the magnetic force or strength between the medium one and the smaller one wasn't that much of a difference. Medium one sort of had more umph to it, but it's a heavier piece. So it, compared to the light one, I think there's kind of a trade-off, especially with this Mamma Jamma right here. Its docking force was greatly stronger, but the trade-off is of course the size and the weight. So while you do have more umph, finding room for it is, is a little bit challenging. So to make the docking port Kraken drive, or aka warp drive, or my warp drive, maybe not anybody else's warp drive, but definitely my warp drive, and why does it disappear when I do that? Weird. We're going to build a little bit of a bigger one for larger vessels, but we need to first figure out just the max amount of weight that we can get one of these pistons with a whole bunch of docking ports slapped to it. How much we can get it to lift. It's maximum potential. We're going to take this top one, docking force to zero, docking force to 200, alt click, copies the part, we'll duplicate it six times, bring it down so I can see what I'm doing, alt click, copy the part, duplicate it six more times, and this will make a symmetry of 12 instead of eight, try to make them as close as possible, do the same with the bottom, all right, I'm going to go ahead and rigid attachment and strut to heaviest part, now through trial and error and testing, I thought about taking all of these and squishing them in, clipping them into just one, and what I found out is that when you bring the docking ports together, since they're so closely aligned with each other because they're squished together you end up having a lot of docking ports trying to connect just one docking port and when that happens it kind of really messes with everything it becomes unstable so i've noticed that if you just separate them a little bit so that each docking port sees its twin docking port then all of them will line up and produce the same amount of thrust every time so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring these in as close as we think we should without them without them connecting okay so I think we've found our golden number with a target extension of 12 at 10 point almost 5 tons. So almost 10 and a half tons. 
One more thing we need to test out though, is the ability to stop our warp engine. Cause sometimes it takes it a while to stop attracting to the other side. I'm not sure how far away it needs to be. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to cheat the coil into space and find out just how far away they need to be separated in order for it to stop. There we go. Looks like we're at almost five G's coming on four G's. Let's see how far away we need to be in order for it to stop completely. Still going, still going up. Oh, all right, about 0.99 or 0.100 to be safe. Or excuse me, 1.00 to be safe. It's about that far away, and that will stop the uh, effect. Look at that, though. I went to 0.19, and the Gs just shot up. Maybe I should have done this earlier. The Gs are, like, at right at 5, at 0.17. I'm a little confused now. Maybe that's how we should measure it from now on, instead of trying to lift it off the ground, huh? And, of course... At 1.0 or 0.99, let's do safe. We'll just be safe. Bring it at at least 1.0. If I can type it in, probably not. Oh, there we go. All right, there you have it. That is that is the warp coil. And uh, I wasted a whole bunch of time trying to figure out how much it could lift off the ground when all I had to do was really go into space and look at the G-forces because that tells me just how much force is going into it. Oh, well. Sometimes you learn new things all the time in KSP, even if you are an old fart like me have been playing the game for ever since it came out. So that's pretty much the warp drive in a nutshell, or the AKA Kraken docking port drive. So let's go ahead and look at some other K drives that are out there. So for example, grab an ion engine. Oh, hello, Ben. Mr. Ben, welcome to the fold. Oh no, what did I join? Space cult. Prepare the liquid fuel sacrifice. Grab an ion engine, then you've got your reaction wheel just to have a little bit of control, some fuel, let's for not forget a battery, and another ion engine. And there you go, just missing one more thing, and that is the cow controller, aka super hack machine. Right click on the cow controller, open editor, action groups, select the top engine first, click on the thrust limiter, go down in here, and you wanna make the thrust limiter negative. Same thing with the other side. Apparently what this does is that when you activate it through throttle, instead of consuming resources at a certain rate, it starts creating resources at that certain rate. Some sort of weird glitch happens where instead of consuming fuel and electricity producing thrust, it starts creating fuel and electricity. I have no idea what happens in the program that makes it do that, but it does that, so we'll be using that to our advantage. Then click on the bottom engine which is going to be your thrust. Also click on thrust limiter, click on the box, and then toggle it to go straight up. Same thing with the other side. And we'll just bring these up for good measure. So now that when you right click on the bottom engine and you move this forward like so, notice how the numbers skyrocket. That's a lot of thrust, which means that it would suck up just amount, just about as a much fuel and electricity as, it's, as the thrust that it's producing. However, because you're going to toggle the top engine the same way with the thrust, it will create equal amount of electricity and fuel for the bottom engine to consume, basically never running out of power. Look at that, negative, and the freaking negatives. But because it's negative and positive, they feed off each of it, off one another. Now I've tried to have it where you just turn it on and off. It doesn't work for some reason. So what you want to do is once you're done setting up your thrust, exit out of there, go down to your axis groups and go down to your main throttle. Click on the cow 1000. Click on the play position. We want to adjust it to the max. So let's give it a quick go. All right, hit spacebar, activate both engines, turn on SAS, and just give it a little bit of thrust holding the shift key. A little bit more. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. And that's just a little bit of thrust. If I was to go all the way, she would pop. Ready? Going all the way in three, two, one. Yeah, see, when you hit the Z key and go full thrust, for some reason, it doesn't work. It kills it very quickly. Interestingly enough, you can't go full throttle real hard or else it breaks the little hack that's going on in here. Now, it should also be noted that this hack doesn't just work on the ion drive, but any engine that you can play around with the thrust. I haven't tested it for jet engines, but I know that it can work on most rockets. Uh, observe. This is just a little bit of thrust, barely any, and... Let's straighten that out in three, two, one. Up, oh, it broke. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 good gosh. Nope, it's not allowing me to get any more air out of it, but still. 
good grief, man. This hack is a super cheat for sure. Yep, not getting, there's no more. That's it, she bit the dust. Still, pretty cool. Now I do have a burning question before I get going with the next Kraken Drive. Could this be a viable, non-cheaty kind of thing if I wasn't to make it give me infinite fuel and electricity? In other words, could we give it a buttload of fuel and power and get that same thrust and just make sure that we have enough power and fuel for it? All right, let's see here. Click on the engine, thrust limiter, bring it up to insanity, insanity, main throttle, good, good, place, play, okay, good, good. Okay, so we've doubled our electric charge, kept the fuel to a low because it didn't look like it was sucking up that much fuel. But let's go ahead and see how much delta V we get out of all of this in three, two, one. <gasps> Ooh, it blew up. Okay, let's try that again. Testing it in three, two, one, not too strong. Oh man, our G's are way up there already. And we're out of charge. Not bad. A couple thousand meters per second. Oh yeah, we've left the uh, Kerbin system and uh, got into an orbit around Kerbal. And I think we only used about one fourth of our fuel. So you're looking at at least four, eight thousand meters per second delta V. You'd have to have like a, a nuclear charge or a bunch of solar panels or something just to charge it up. So pretty much a one hit and go. So everybody would be in the back of their seats. And I mean, the G's went all the way to 15. People would be passing out, okay? People would be dying. And people would be passing out. <laughs> Okay, super ion drive test in three, two, one, activate. Uh, shit. What? Hmm. Interesting. A little bit of technical difficulty and go. All right, engaging throttle a little bit more, a little bit more. That's about what, five Gs? There goes the electric charge. Okay, about one third of our fuel and actually not that much delta V compared to the last test that we did. I think we would need to put on more of these. Okay, so interesting concept. I made it look kind of cool. I got kind of carried away. Sorry about that, but um, interesting concept. I think it could work. It'd be like a whole drive section, right? Just loaded with power. And then it takes however long to recharge everything before you get another burst of energy. But I think it would be interesting to play around with, nevertheless. All right, lastly, the gear drive. Now, gear drives have been, been around since the beginning of... Uh, the Kraken Age of KSP. But the most simplest design that I found came with a DLC. Was it a DLC that gave us robotic parts? You know, don't take my word for it. I think it's just robotic parts in general, when they were put into the game, have made the gear Kraken drive very easy. It's still unstable. The Kraken drive for the gears are way more powerful, but yet just as unstable as ever in comparison to the docking port Kraken drive. Now we're just going to build a quick platform real quick. A quick platform real quick. Now, of course, you can use a variety of different gears. The best ones I know of are the landing gears, the wheels on them, but you also have your steerable landing gear, which we all know is one of the craziest, most bounciest parts in the whole game. Next, we want to go ahead and same vessel interaction for all our gears and same vessel interaction for the modular girder part. You can use any part as long as it has a high impact tolerance. Let's give it a go. See what happens. Oh crap, it's already taking off. Hello, gosh damn it. Bringing these out just a little bit. Okay, now let's hope this works. We'll extend them out a little bit and watch the magic happen. That's a lot more calm and peaceful. Let's start cranking it up some more and some more all the way. Not bad. Got a little flying saucer thing going on. Pretty controllable. Kind of nice, actually. It's like anti-gravity almost. Very, very nice. Oh, there she goes. She got into her element. She got into her element and now she's gone. Oh, 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 oh. Like I said, these gear drives are very unstable. Sometimes you can get them to be extremely stable. Other times, not so much, which is one of the reasons why I like the docking port Kraken drive because it can be very, very stable although it did take a while to figure that out so through testing you could make a very stable gear drive through trial and error and testing and all that good stuff now, i know these little guys are just evil incarnate we'll see what they got for us there she goes uh you ain't gonna fool me i know you're gonna i know you're gonna hit me with all that g-force any second now oh there it goes three g's two g's oh my gosh 
Oh, we're already at 15 G's. 15 G's, back, back it up. I lost it. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Hold on, if I change the settings on the gears and the piston itself, maybe that will tighten it up a little bit. Alright, that's pretty much it for the gear Kraken drive. A few things to note is that I had to turn everything off. Control, spring strength, turn it all off. Dampening strength off. Friction control, I just, just turn the whole damn thing off. And then for my piston, okay, the dampening need to be off. So dampening's all the way down. No dampening. Goodbye dampening. Remember to always click on the part and have the same vessel interaction with the gears as well as the floor mount that you're gonna have them press against all right so we're pulling about 5 G's with this with this drive pretty cool not bad at all not bad at all a little unruly but not bad at all well everyone thank you so much for being a part of this channel thank you so much for watching I love you all take care and have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video Bye for now. Bye-bye.